Hi, Paul. Barbara, how are you doing? Oh, hi, everybody. Hi, there's a few people here already. Great. Hi. Great. How's everybody? Hi, everybody. Uh, Grant, just out of another uh, meeting, funnily enough. <laughs> yeah. Another I, Zoom meeting. I'm, yeah. So. I'm finding Zoom meetings are sort of stacking up one after the other. The other, yeah. Tell you about it. Gosh. Really handy to have, though. It is. It does. It does really. It works well. It works well. What's the difference? Can you use Microsoft Teams in a, si in a similar way? Can you have conference calls? You can. The only thing I found, Barbara, is that um, this is with students, is that um, Microsoft Team, or sorry, Zoom is much more easy. It's easier to connect to it. Um, okay. Like, so you have the URL or you have your app on the phone and there's no real, it's very intuitive how you engage with the meeting. Whereas um, you have to register for Microsoft Teams. Or yeah. Register. So, I mean, and once you're in and once people are used to using Microsoft Teams, it's the same. It's actually better. Yeah. Because there's more functionality on it. But what I found a little bit with Microsoft Teams as well is there's too much you can do with it and it just becomes a little bit confusing, I think, for people. You know, you can share documents and co-edit and you can do a lot of, there's a lot of stuff. Whereas Zoom is just very, um, it seems very straightforward. How are you, Emma? Not too bad. How are you? Good, 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 good working from home at the minute <laughs> yeah um how are you finding that uh stressful to say the least um yeah. we're hopefully trying to do our first zoom meeting tomorrow with one of our groups um so haven't yet done it but i'm hoping it all goes to plan for us <laughs> and have you have you used zoom before have you coordinated zoom meetings before no um i've just been invited into them um from yourself and yeah from um, another group that i'd be involved with um but no i've I, i'll do it for the first time tomorrow myself and do you have this is just sort of to that you're you're aware um do you have an account uh emma or will you be using the free zoom version uh we'll be doing the free version for now just to kind of see how it goes um, yeah my manager has asked me to try it out because then they're going to see if they can bring it in for supervision and stuff like that because a lot of us are working from home at the minute yeah um, I mean what I would say to you is is sort of be conscious this is just sort of um, before you even use it be conscious a little bit that the free version yeah. is time limited yeah it's 40 minutes I think isn't it yeah it, it allows you oftentimes to go over the 40 minutes but you can't rely on it to give you more than the 40 minutes yeah yeah um so and what i have found with the free version as well is that it's not as good at um encouraging you to do things like recording and stuff like that it's okay it's it's fine it's it's grand but sometimes if you have a problem with the free version don't abandon it you know <laughs> they the problem might be easier to overcome in the paid for version. Yeah, yeah. And one, you know, even though they don't encourage you to do this in my in in Zoom, but one version, you know, once you share the password, lots of different people can use it. So you probably mm -hmm. only need one license per youth work per, per service or per project. You know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So hopefully, hopefully tomorrow now we'll go go to plan. Um, I, the groups that I'm running it with only have a handful of people, so it shouldn't be too tight to get the the forty minutes in. You know that way. And how many do you have in the group? Um, one there'll only be myself and another youth worker, and four young people. And okay. then another group there'll be myself and Marie, who is in the course as well, and probably about seven young people. So, yeah. not too. Um. Do you want? I mean, um. 
have many people you you i, I mean what i could do is uh, there's a, a couple of small tricks with zoom if you wanted me to maybe just over give you a, a sense of you know little things that i found to be really helpful i mean i could talk about those at the end if you want them um, if you wanted to stay on afterwards if anybody wanted to talk about zoom afterwards we can do that just to maybe give you a sense of one or two little things that you can do that might help with the meeting tomorrow yeah that might be useful yeah that'd be great yeah yeah so we might do that at the end. um would it be okay if we just checked in with everybody while you're coming just to see how people are doing and what they're at and is that it emma you haven't been in work work in terms of you haven't been within um, the work well service? we have the option okay yeah no we have the option of um of being in the office or working from home um there's a lot of us though that's the only thing and there's not that many computers so the spaces are quite limited so those okay. of us who can have chosen to work from home for the time being anyway okay okay yeah and what i mean this is just i mean uh, i mean i'd just really like to get a sense in terms of is it is it are you looking to um i mean i know some of the youth services that i'd be familiar with here I think the managers are taking the time to catch up on paperwork and policies and different stuff like that rather necessarily. Are you being encouraged to engage with young people from home or have you figured that one out yet? Uh, yeah, no, we are. We're, um, there's a couple of us who kind of look after our social media and stuff like that. So okay. we're trying to come up with different ways of, of engaging them through that and other means. So okay. that's okay. where the Zoom has come from. As okay, well. that's great. Well, would it be yeah, okay? Um, but, yeah, sorry. Sorry, yeah, just that we're organising our timetable now around things like Zoom calls and Discord and that kind of thing. Discord, tell um, me about that, Ashling. Discord, uh, Discord is uh, it's an online chat kind of client. It was and it's specifically for gaming, but like you can use it for lots of different things. Okay. Um, so. We figured that the young people would be more familiar with Discord, so and might already have accounts. So yeah. we're we're setting one up at the moment. Okay, okay, that's really that's really useful. Um, and are you working at home as well, Ashling? I am, yeah. Okay, um, that's great. And are you going to try to align your Zoom meetings and your Discord chats? with the youth work times the timetable that you would have had that people would young people would have been in with you had in the normal course of events uh we're for the most part yes we're trying to stick to keeping them around five o'clock though as it just seems to be an easier time for everybody okay. uh but the timetable itself is based on to keep up their routine is based on the one that we have okay going on at the moment so like for example <laughs> Uh, a gaming group might happen on Monday or on Wednesday there could be an art group that kind of thing so. okay 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 that's good and are you, you're contacting them through their at, at home so obviously they have access to computers at home yes uh, it's stuff like I would now I wouldn't be the one contacting them as I don't have access to things like the uh, the Facebook group or the clubhouse okay. the phone but uh, yeah, that's usually how we come okay. through um, Messenger and that kind of thing. Okay. So, sure. Sure. Yeah. The, so now, uh, especially for the youngest group, their parents have to be called to be told about our plans and to get kind of permission for the young people to to join in on those kind of groups if possible. And we have to figure out ways of, for the sake of protecting, you know, for child safety and our safety as well uh, we have to try and organize things about how there needs to always still be two mentors with a group even virtually Zoom. so yeah. yeah that's all that stuff we're working on the timetable i actually have it open there in one of my tasks so. okay, okay. So, sorry can i just ask a question about that so you you all have work phones and then you can engage with them through your different work phones i'm just thinking of child no, there's just one work phone and the rest of us are using specific, we're making specific kind of accounts now on things like Discord or on Zoom that are... The work account. No, no personal one. Yeah. No. That's it, because there's a whole other like area to be thinking about now, isn't there, when increased 
that's the thing. Like I have my own Discord, and it's a whole thing of not only did I help set up the um this clubhouse Discord server, I need to also now make a, another account specifically for talking to the young people. Yeah, and I I don't want them getting into my business. Yeah. Like, like I use Discord to talk to my friends. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. You don't want to get it mixed up, obviously. Exactly, I, think that, yeah. I think that's really, it is really sensible. And that's why, I mean, even having a having a shared account for things like Zoom and having an organizational account rather than your own private one is probably better going forward. You know, might need mm. people might need to set up temporary accounts because, um, yeah, you, you, you never know when people will reactivate the connection um, so yeah it, it's, would it be okay could we just go through people quickly just to see where people are at i know most people are, are logged in at this stage but would it be okay emma or sorry we have um ashling and emma on you do you want to maybe tell us how things are going for yourself if you're if you can um yeah um, i'm just going to make this quick because i've got two kids as well so i'm sorry about the background noise. <laughs> and, and i'm working from home um, so, we we're just waiting guidelines um for all your projects. They have done the online club ones already. So okay. that's where we are. That's okay. where we are actually. Brilliant. So you are actually waiting for guidelines to come through and you're expecting them to come through in the next few days, do you think? Uh they said they told me to, well, I emailed today and they said it should be today, by today. So um yeah, okay. just waiting to hear. That's brilliant, Anya. Here you can put your, put it on mute again. Okay. That's great. Uh, thanks, Anya. Uh, Megan, how are you doing? Good now. Good, good, good. In strange good. times. Um, I'm also working from home, but my role was always to support staff. So I've been getting a lot of phone calls, I suppose, around family support workers and our own staff. And, and like uh, Anya said, uh, I've just come off a, a meeting call with uh, our managers and they are working on doing guidelines around using Zoom and kind of uh what detach youth work trying to disband some of the groups different things like that so there's kind of lots of things going on but we're doing a lot of research of other ways to, to work them like with online gaming and things that's why i'm interested to hear kind of any suggestions yeah today. yeah what i was hoping to do megan is like mark had been in touch with me during the week as well and a few different youth services have been in touch in relation to the possibility of using games so i have some suggestions um, but what I'm sort of more interested, what we might do, if like we 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 will use up the full hour. But what I, I'd really love is to get some suggestions from you as to what might be useful. I mean, I'm really. I was talking with Barbara and Catherine earlier in the week, and I suppose one of the things, or last week, sorry, and one of the things I'm sort of really open to doing is changing what we're doing here, mm. and use the time and use the resources that we have as a collective to come up with something that might be useful. Obviously, that'll be useful for you, that might even be more broadly useful as well in terms of the sector. So so how yeah. do we respond to this in terms of what we're trying to do in, in using games and youth work? So absolutely, we can, I'll, I'll give you some ideas. You can tell me what you think, and then maybe I sure. can develop something to send on to you that you might be able to use within your youth service right. or whatever. That'd be amazing. <laughs> That's okay, great. Well, because a lot of a lot of the stuff we're using at the moment is stuff we're used to, I suppose, around the social media and trying to build up yeah. social media followings and, and like what the guys are saying, it's like phone calls, a lot of phone calls at the moment with families and kind of linking in. But I think the feedback we're getting a lot of staff at the moment is young people are still seeing this as a kind of a holiday mode at the moment. Yeah. I don't think the reality is actually hit in yet. So our biggest concerns are going to be around mental health, family breakdown, lots of traditional things that we're, we're fearful for. So I think we're all kind of bracing ourselves at the moment making sure that we're kind of updating ourselves and the different resources that we we might be able to use and also guidelines around our youth work because a lot of things will change especially when the emergency departments and gps now are going to be overrun so i think that's a lot of the conversations we're having at the moment uh, absolutely i think Meg, i think it is really i think one of the things we need to be i need to be enormously conscious is that you know sort of games and access to even technology for many young people, it is, is fairly is, is reasonably straightforward. But there's an awful lot happening in their lives at the moment, both in terms of the, the change in routine, but also I suppose things that might be happening within the family space that you know might cause distress and might mean it's more difficult for them to access the types of supports that you know they they might have constructed around their youth work engagement and that. So. Um, um, 
I, I think in some ways creating a routine that works for them can be enormously important. I mean, one of the things that um, I'm finding um, it, with my kids, and they're by no means typical, um, and my two boys, is the games have been a godsend for them. Mm -hmm. um, within a structured, we, you know, we have very structured time, but we allow them weekday access because it's the only opportunity to get to engage with their friends. And um, also it's a distraction. It's we a distraction. all need a distraction right now. Anybody binging on Netflix? We all need a distraction. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, absolutely. And what's fantastic is to hear them laughing. Yeah. Because they don't laugh that much with us. We're not funny to them. We are, we are, we are funny to them, but not funny ha-ha. We're more funny peculiar. Um, but when they're playing with their friends, they're laughing. And, you know, that, that, you know that's a, it's a nice thing. Um, so, yeah, we look at maybe ways of sort of maybe harnessing that a wee bit more. but. Um, being conscious that not all young people have access to games and to technology, and that for a lot of them, um, maybe things have moved or may move beyond that in terms of their needs. So um, we, we can we can we can do that. Um, that's great. That, that thanks a million, Megan. I'm just going through the names as they are here. Um, but, um, let me see. Sorry. Um, Marie, are you there? Hear me? Yeah, I can have you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so working from home as well. Um, and very similar to Emma, we're on uh, the same group. So I'm um, just trying to zoom out there tomorrow. Okay, okay. And another, because we have our work phones um, at home, um, I suppose there's been some texting through some, we have some WhatsApp groups. Yeah. Um, and I suppose the idea is because a lot of my groups would be um, arts based groups is to kind of set creative challenges and stuff for the groups yeah. and hope they'll engage that way. And other than that now, it's that's kind of where we're at at the minute. I suppose we're all just trying to learn yeah. how best to engage on like technology. I am brutal with technology. So this is a huge challenge for yeah. me, you know, um, but um, yeah, so other than that, we're, that's, that's kind of really, that's where we're at now. And how are you feeling about that, Marie? Is, is it something you're looking forward to or is it overwhelming in terms of the technology? Is it, is it, do you think you'll come out of this um, better equipped or do you think, um, is, it, is it causing you stress, do you think, Marie, in terms of the for me it's a little bit overwhelming i think because i'm just not great at it so yeah. like the whatsapp the, the stuff like that is all is all fine but even the zoom like emma will take the lead on that yeah. um i'm just not great so i hope i do learn a few new skills yeah. over the next couple of weeks you know but uh, it's a little bit daunting because we're not used to working that way so yeah i mean one of the things if it's any consolation to you marie is yeah. is um is I, I think one of the things, like there is tech, like, sorry, um, one of the things is um, sort of being subversive in some ways around technology. I was talking to some kids there recently about, um, about um, sharing video from their games. And um, I was trying to show them how they'd, you know, how they could stream their, their video and they said, no, I don't mind that. And they, they were just using their mobile phones to, um to video what was on their screen and using that so in some ways um you know to use the technology you've access to and that you're comfortable with rather than trying to learn enormously complicated ways of doing yeah. things you know it's just take the things you know and use them and then you know once you once once you once you, once you get up get 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 used to that maybe other things will will become easier but yeah i i think it, it it's a matter of taking it one step at a time and not trying not to do too much with yeah, technology exactly. at the beginning yeah i think the most most powerful thing we have oftentimes is the mobile phone and oh, yeah, yeah yeah that's great thanks marie um Aaron, do you want to maybe give us a sense of where you're at and where, where things are with you yeah so we're um we're all working from home at the moment their building is completely shut down um, so we're doing everything through it's the same as everyone else. We're trying to do Google Hangouts with young people, but the young people aren't having a bar of coming on the camera. So we're just using WhatsApp groups and um, questionnaires. We like the other day we done personality tests with the young people um 
through a WhatsApp group and they got some yes for about two hours. So yeah, just once we're keeping in contact with them, we're um, getting more active on Instagram. So okay. we will be quite active on Facebook anyway, but we're starting to do like Instagram polls and show the um, ask me anything boxes and just get the young people engaged with us. So yeah, it's pretty much the same as everyone else trying our best to keep in contact and get a bit of work done. And when you, you mentioned about the personality tests using WhatsApp, was it was it something like Myers Briggs or was it did you have was there any? Um, yeah, so it was the Myers Briggs one. So I pretty much uh, we have like this uh, professional development uh, thing in work and we were doing it there and um, so we just decided to do it with the young people as well. So okay. I just copied the link, sent it to them and then they all sent in the results and we kind of like compared them and talked about them what all the letters meant and stuff like that. So they were really, really interested and they want to do more on it. So I suppose if that keeps them interested for a few days, it's yeah. something to talk about. Yeah, I think the challenge can be kind of like if it raises issues for young people, either positive or maybe challenging issues to be available yeah. to walk, talk them through, talk them through what their concerns or their excitement might be. Because Myers-Briggs always brings up stuff, doesn't it? Yeah, they were like really interested in the whole like introvert and extrovert thing. That was like the biggest talk conversation. I was like, I can't believe you're an extrovert and I'm an introvert. <laughs> yeah. So, and it worked okay using technology to talk with people. Yes. Yeah, so we um, would already have WhatsApp groups um, where are young people that are in closed groups. Okay. And so they would be our targeted young people. So we already have parents' permission to contact them through their like air work phones onto their personal phones. Okay. Then WhatsApp groups are already set up. So that was handy. Okay, great, great, great. Brilliant. Thanks, thanks, Erin. Um, Ashley, are you, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Hello. Yeah. Or sorry, yeah. the other Ashley. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, okay. uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Ashley. Um, Ashley. Hi. How you doing? Good. Um, well, I'm kind of the opposite. I feel in complete self-isolation. Being a freelance artist, sort of all workshops and things have been cancelled. So I'm uh, completely self-isolating, talking away to myself. <laughs> okay. Okay. And have you started answering yourself back yet, Ashley? Oh, I, I've done that for years, unfortunately. Okay. 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 Potentially. <laughs> okay. And how are you finding it? At the moment, okay, to be honest. Um, I'm kind of using this time to sort of do more admin and sorting, I suppose, my own space in a sense and kind of looking at what, what work I have been doing. So, but I think going forward now, um, I'll start to feel like I'm just floating about if I don't sort of anchor myself in some way or. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and is there anything, um, technology based that you feel you want to engage with Ashley is there anything um, I suppose that might enable you do your work from home that um, is on the horizon or that you'd like to yeah like to get more familiar with well I suppose like Marie I'm not really technically um minded but I I do have Instagram and in a sense myself I was working with a youth group there. I had um, uh, I was doing a STEM project, and we were looking at seeds and germination and that sort of thing. And I, in a sense, I've been keeping on that. Yeah. Practice. I have a microscope, and I've been trying to take images and sort of finding a way of maybe questioning how can I engage people th through what I'm doing here. So I'm kind of continuing the work myself. Yeah with what I we in this topics that I would be working with the youth groups, but now I don't really know how to so maybe through Instagram or through online. Yeah. Uh, I have a I have Facebook and I have Instagram. I haven't really ever engaged in you know, I, I don't really I think that's the only really engaged because I don't have you know groups per se that I can call on. So it'd be more kind of opening up to the social void or yeah in a sense but i mean if if i mean i don't think i think facebook is enormously adaptable you know and 
you know, whether it's personal messaging or whether it's posting pictures or assignments or, you know, following straight, as long as people are connected with it. I think young people don't tend to engage that much with Facebook anymore. No. Mm. Um, Instagram, obviously they do, but I mean, many of them don't as well. I mean, WhatsApp is fantastic if you can get people to buy into it in terms of uh, signing up to a group on WhatsApp, because it obviously can be very, it's very focused, you know? Mm -hmm. very, I mean, obviously it's very easy to use in terms of sharing pictures and having discussions and then. But there's a whole other area to be considered, isn't it, as a freelancer, if you're working you know, engaging with young people, you know, it's kind of different if you're in a youth work organization. For sure. Yeah. So you need to keep yourself, like look after yourself as well. Yep. I kind of feel like it, it's where I'm positioned. It's maybe more me posting things, whether it's sort of little games I'm playing and asking other, you know, finding a way to more speak out and invite response but not through trying to set up any sort of particular group maybe yeah yeah it's a, vo it's a voice in one way that's either you know posing questions or well i mean ashley if you if you wanted to you know certainly what we can do i mean i'd be more than happy if you wanted to connect on facebook I, i'm not I'm not as active on Facebook as I used to be, but I mean, if there was stuff you wanted to connect on, and maybe it might be something we might do as a group, even is uh, check in occasionally, because, you know, I'd be really conscious. Um, it can be a very isolated time. Mm. Um, but certainly, um, if you want to connect, um, do and we can sort of send on our details through Catherine if you if you want to connect by Facebook or whatever. Okay. Okay. Is there anybody else that I'm I'm missing that hasn't had a chance to touch base? No, I think that's okay. Um, I'm late. <laughs> I joined a wee bit late. Sorry about that. Oh, Tracy. I was on an hour meeting. <laughs> How are you? Um, yeah okay yeah adjusting to it all it's good it's good though i'm getting into like a routine of it so it's actually bad and yeah. have, you, have you have you found is there is there a full schedule of meetings and touching base and that is has it sort of gotten into a pattern yet not as such no but then because i'm on i'm doing my handover this week <laughs> so oh. it's a bit awkward so uh, i'm finishing up now i'm on annual leave from Friday and all of next week and then start the new job the following week. Okay. So I'm just trying to get everything in place for the for the handover and uh, but still maintaining I'm doing Zoom groups with with Zoom Zoom sessions with the young people. Okay. And then we're looking at there and then WhatsApp, continuous WhatsApp support that goes as well and like one to one phone calls and things like that. And uh, and then I was looking at house party there at the weekend. So I'm gonna maybe try that with some of them. So, because it's uh, you can have like this, you can have like a group video call, but you can play trivia and heads up and like Pictionary and things like this here with them on it. So, we're going to maybe try and give that a go and see how that works. That sounds great. Um, so, just trying to try new things. <laughs> I was going to say to you, are you going anywhere nice for your week off, but probably no. the, <laughs> the sitting room for maybe, yeah. Yeah, I'll be moving from room to room. Yeah, <laughs> get out and walk the dog, and that'll be about it. But I've got a, a friend in the club there. We're going to meet on like online on Sunday, so I've got the book to read in the meantime for the book club and things like that there, and doing like we online like exercise classes and things like that here. So just trying to signed up for loads of courses online as well, <laughs> trying to keep busy. So yeah, that's great. We can maybe talk about that a little bit, but but could I just check? I mean, one of the things that I'm really interested in is what struck me with a lot of young people I'm interacting with is that they're not automatically, you know, they're not really using WhatsApp and they're not connecting with their friends using, I suppose, a lot of the platforms that we might think make sense. They're not using, you know, if they're on Discord or if they're on other um, sharing sites, they probably are, but have you come across, I mean, or has anybody come across how young people are keeping connected with their friends, you know, <laughs> apart from games, but is there other fora that they're using? Yeah. Other media? TikTok. 
TikTok, TikTok seems to be the main one, yeah. Which one? Snapchat. TikTok. TikTok, yeah. Okay. Even with, even if they are playing games, it depends on what type of game they play. So whether they're on a PS4 or they have a PC. Absolutely. And it can be very gender specific as well. I mean, yeah. I mean, maybe the more, yeah, lads can be playing particular games and girls different games and it, it doesn't seem to work as well. But TikTok or... Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's because it's going to become an issue more so I think over the next maybe week or two is reconnecting with their school friends at particular ages. I think once they're in their late teens, they can take their own responsibility. But when they're sort of maybe late primary, early secondary school, um, structured engagement with their friends is probably going to become important. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know the extent to which it's sort of been happening. I, 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 um, I think we've taken for granted. And I think a lot of kids ha have sort of seen this as an extended holiday. But I suppose we're. It's, it's, it, it'll be interesting to see how it evolves. Um, I don't know if you can see that Laura and Sharon are with us as well, Paul. I don't know. If they can, uh, see can you hear? Yeah. Hi, Sharon. Hi. I wasn't yeah. sure if my microphone was working. You yeah, can hear me okay? Yeah? Yeah. Yes, we can. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's the same for us. We're um, not speaking for Laura. Sorry, Laura. Um, we are um, both working from home and like that, trying to be as creative as possible um, and engaging with the young people. So um, it's actually working OK um, so far. Um, we're just hoping we won't run out of ideas. But um, yeah, so we're just, I suppose, ringing them as well. So we would have always kind of um, always rang them for different things but bringing them talking to them over the phone getting feedback as to how they're finding the whole situation um and then kind of feeding back to it like through our instagrams and different things like that instagram and um snapchat and facebook um we're also looking at doing kind of like barbara i spoke to you a bit about it um and i actually spoke to her or esteem um today about maybe giving the young people different kind of projects to do at home so like one would be like a steam, um, kind of doing a steam activity around life photography and then kind of um, giving them guidelines and different things as how to, how to do that. Uh, other kind of things that we're doing is, yeah, trying to like, so we have like the groups that we have up and running, we're trying to continue them, but like virtually, I suppose. Um, so we have like a citizenship group and we're trying to look at ways in which so they were doing a project around um, um linking in with the the older people in their community so now we're looking at what we, how can we do that from home you know that kind of way so like you know there were suggestions as to like write letters or cards and different things like that so yeah it's just trying to keep our groups going but um looking at ways that we can do that um kind of creative ways but uh, so far like the young people we have been in touch with are really interested in kind of keeping everything going and, and getting in touch and they're really interested in a Zoom. But, but I think we have to wait to get like our guidelines from head office around that. But yeah, no, that's, really, that's really useful, Sharon. I think the other challenge maybe as well, I think what's interesting is that a lot of the schools are using uh, uh, co computer-based software to communicate with young people as well. And it's to sort of, to, to find a way of doing it that is maybe different and engaging them differently to maybe have yeah. engaging with the schools and that. Yeah, Everybody. they seem willing, which is the most um, important thing. They're 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 willing to to give it a go and they're willing to engage. So. Yeah, like well, Laura, you've been doing other kind of things as well, so I don't know. Um, um, yeah, just from listening to others there, we um, or what you said at the start, Paul, just about um, you know contacting them at this kind of the same time um, each day that the group would have been on. You know, keeping it like. You know, there's no point in us say ringing every day looking to see are they okay, but the day their group would be on, like, and check in with them and around the project that we're doing at the minute, like the citizenship and keeping that bit going. Or our youth committee, we did a good bit um, Thursday and Friday with them about having an input into what the service looks like now that we're all at home and what we can do to help or support them. And I suppose having them say things that other young people might um, have the same, you know, ideas about and. Just, just sharing that then and seeing what the feedback is like. Yeah. 
No, that's really, I mean, and I think as the lads were saying as well, I think as things go on, that structure is going to become more and more important. Um, I think everybody's sort of figuring it out now, including young people and their parents. But I think, you know, um, um, next this week and next week, it would be great for them to know on Thursday evening uh, between four and five or mm. the afternoon, this is, this is on and it's something to put a rhythm to their week because um, I think this being the first weekend or the, the weekend past really being the first weekend after Paddy's Day, I think now people are going to, you know, there is going to need to be a pattern to the week. Mm. And I think that's, that's something that, you know, is going to be important in terms of um, how, what people are expecting, what's coming up and what opportunities people have to break the, the monotony maybe that they're feeling or they're going to be feeling over the next week while. Um, that's great. Thanks a million. Thanks a million, Laura. Um, would I be able to go through a presentation of just some ideas, lads, if that's okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, what we can do is we can talk about them as we go. Um, and it's basically just something Mark isn't here today. So it's really something that Mark asked me to do. Um, and um, it's really just to, to start maybe a conversation this you you'd have better ideas than I would in terms of some of the stuff that's possible, but um, um, I might just sort of use this as a way to get the conversation started. Um, okay, just to start it off here. So, I mean, it's really um, just looking at, so I think one of the ideas, like, so what, um, what, um, what Mark was asking, and, and again, a few other people here in TIP have sort of been asking, um, is there any sort of projects that we could encourage young people to get working on um, that might, um, I suppose, engage them in a youth work type of way using games or using technology? So I suppose one of the things that we could do, I mean, I'll come back to maybe structure in a minute, but one of the, one of the, I suppose obvious places to start with is with something like Scratch. Um, and for any of you who haven't used Scratch, it's very similar to um, what you did with Natasha um, up in Briar on the micro bit. So it's it's programming using these little Lego pieces that you fit together. It's reasonably straightforward, um, but it's very potentially very powerful. Um, the difficulty sometimes can be with Scratch is that once uh, young people get to 10, 12, 13, they think they're too big for scratch. Um, and even if they haven't coded in the past, um, that uh, they feel, you know, scratch is a kiddies thing. But actually, if you set them a complicated project, scratch is a really brilliant and powerful sort of programming language in which to develop games or projects. So, I mean, um, that you know you could get them to collaborate on on a scratch project dealing directly or indirectly with the situation that they're faced with or a development education um, <clears throat> challenge. so you could ask them to develop a game in scratch to deal with something like climate change I, I wouldn't say dealing with climate change you have to give them a very specific brief or else it'll become way too um, complex or it'll, it, it'll take them too long to move on the project and um, so what you need to do if you're going to look at setting them a scratch project is set them a very specific brief and I'll talk about that in a second um, so a very specific brief has to be developed and you have to give them guidance on what they what you need them to do so it's not just a matter of saying do this and here's your brief but you need to give them the steps or at least um, give them some guidance as to what steps you want them to take. So what I was suggesting that you could you could set a project and give it five phases. And this is assuming, you know, this is terrible. Like my students are asking me when they'll see me again. And I'm telling them I'll see you at graduation in November. Because I don't think, I think this is how it's going to be for the next maybe couple of months. So um, I would be very surprised if there's youth groups back 
in a conventional sense before June, July anyway. Um, yeah. So we need to sort of plan this over a long period of time, a reasonably long period of time. So, so the idea I was having is if you were doing a scratch project, it might take, you might, you might decide that this is going to take, you want to do it over a month or over three weeks or four weeks. Um, I don't know, are young people ready for that length of commitment? But you could break it down into five steps. So you give them the brief and then individually they come up with a concept for a game or a concept for a project. Um, and then you could say, okay, um, we're going to break you into groups of three and they can communicate themselves using whatever, you know, could be WhatsApp, could be whatever form. And again, it's probably important from a youth work perspective to have guidelines on how you support them in interacting with each other. If it's going to be in the context of a project that you've developed, but that they could look at designing a game in groups of three and then coding the game in groups of three using, so they design the game according to a template and then they'll code it using Scratch in groups of three. And then they share it with other groups. So you, you, you might say what we're gonna do if there's nine people who want to participate in something like that, then you have three groups of three. Um, and then they submit three games out of the nine people. So you'd break it up into groups. So you'd say, you know, by this time next week, we want everybody to have a concept and we'll pick three or you'll pick three out of the nine concepts. And then what you'll do is break into groups of three and then create a design for a game. And then in those groups, you'll code your game and then you share the group, the, the game that you've made with everybody else and everybody else plays it and gives you feedback. And then you um, change your game according to the feedback that you've gotten and that'll be your final game. So you'll end up with three games um, and there'll have been nine people involved. Um, and then what you could do is you could put the games or put links to the games up on the website. Um, once you've sort of had a chance to go through them yourself and just make sure that they're reasonably okay. Um, which, so, I mean, it's a reasonably straightforward way to run a project. Um, it does assume that you have access to your websites um, and that you can um, you can um, create links on your websites reasonably straightforward. Um, so as a scratch, project, does that, I mean, does that look credible as a type of project? Is it something that you could see? I mean, I'm not saying that it would work in all contexts, but does anybody see something like that being possible? Yeah, I think it could really work for air group because this is something that they're really into as well. And um, I think the hardest part of them, part of it, will be actually getting them to communicate firstly. Like once we get them going, it'd be fine. Yeah, I think is that Ashling? No, Aaron. Aaron, sorry. I I think you're right. I think the two most complicated things, <laughs> two most complicated things. One is hitching people onto it at the beginning. Yeah. Um. But the other complicated thing is writing a very specific brief. And I can give you some guidance on that. And I was sort of looking at a couple, but uh, one of the ideas I had, you know, um, one of the things about this COVID-19 thing is, you know, you might say, okay, we don't want them to be engaging with COVID-19 as a, or a virus or whatever. But in some ways that's what they're thinking about and you know the example from china is the games that made the most that that sorry that sold the most and that people wanted to play it sounds a bit morbid during the lockdown in china was games that related to viruses and how viruses spread and all of that sounds a bit morbid but in many ways um it, it, people found it therapeutic um uh, to be playing a game about something that was so serious and so immediate. But um, I, I had a couple of ideas about little games or little sort of, not I wouldn't even call them games, but little projects people could do that maybe would educate them a little bit about social or physical distancing and maybe washing your hands and stuff like that without being direct. I think one of the things about games in education is... Um, if you're going to design a game about social distancing or physical distancing, don't make it about people, make it about something like sheep, you know, 
um, because it's too immediate if it's about people. So the idea was that um, that you you create a a scratch thing with sheep on the screen on the, moving around randomly, and then you introduce a blue sheep, and every sheep that the blue sheep touches turns blue. And even just to see how that happens, and how after a short amount of time, all the sheep on the screen will be blue. Because, you know, it's a very simple game to make and it doesn't deal with the virus, but everybody knows that that's what it's about. Um, so rather than deal directly with the virus, look at the dynamic that the virus is creating that everybody is aware. And that what they talk about in games in relation to doing something like that is create this psychological distance that it's not about something very immediate, but it's sort of like a metaphor that everybody knows relates to that thing that's immediate. Um, so it's to create a brief that's, that's doable for the group, but it's also, um, I suppose, maybe of interest to them. Um, so that's Scratch. And Scratch, you know, that website, it's freely available. It's generally, even though, it's gener generally unproblematic to download. Um, you do need Windows, Microsoft 10, or 8, I think, will do, or some of the older versions will do. But generally speaking, a very old version won't upload Scratch efficiently. So it, it, it can be a little bit problematic if you have an older version of, 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 um, of Microsoft. But, um, it's generally fairly straightforward and it is free. So it's, it's, and there's a lot of resources out there. Young people, um, to be honest with you, you set them a project, even if they've never gone near Scratch before, they learn it in a very short amount of time because there's so many instructive videos out there. That was one idea around coding. The second idea was my, I was using Minecraft. And again, I, I, a word of caution on both Scratch and Minecraft is that any lads, boys or girls, more so boys, girls maybe engage with Minecraft for longer than boys do, but a lot of boys who are over 12, 13 say, oh, Minecraft, that's for kids, and they've moved on beyond Minecraft. But I would say to you, if you sent them a competition in Minecraft, they'll go for it. Um, and education version of Minecraft is very good, and there's a lot of resources there. Um, I, I need to check, um, I, I have a free license, I need to check whether youth work organizations can get a free license for the education version of Minecraft. It may mean that the organization might need to buy a group license. Um, I'm not sure has anybody experience of that, of buying a group license or having no. licenses for no. Minecraft? No. Um, it may be a thing that the organization might need. If you want to use Minecraft in this way, you might need to buy a multi-user license. Um, if you can, we, I was able to spoof my way to Microsoft as an educator saying I wanted a free version of, and they gave it to me. Youth work organizations might be able to do the same, but um, I, I, I can look into that a little bit further for you. Um, but one of the things um, that I was sort of suggesting as a project was um, that if you break young people into groups of between three and five and give them a very specific um, project to create in Minecraft and the type of project that you could create would be to get them to build the youth center or the building in which their work projects traditionally would happen um, so in in Briar for example the project that we've been in you could get them to recreate that building in Minecraft but that you'd ask them then to have very specific um, features in it so the doors would have to open and the lights would have to go on and that's more complicated um, but and it, it, it they need to engage with the technical aspects of Minecraft to be able to do that but any of any young people who engage with Minecraft would well be able to do that and then you could create imaginary features so you could do things one of the things I used to like to do when I'd be doing Minecraft in this way is to do an underground maze with them as well so they'd have to do some mining and create or they'd have to create another feature so you you 
you'd set them a brief around, or you could ask them um, to recreate their neighborhood in Minecraft um, in groups of three. So what that actually means sort of practically is that one of them would need to set up a server, which is once they have access to Minecraft, that's fine, and invite the others to join them on the server. So they'd have exclusive access to that particular server uh, and other people, unless they were invited in, wouldn't be able to access the the thing that they were building, which is important because if it's on an open server where other people can access it, things tend to get broken and destroyed and maybe vandalized, for want of a better word. Um, you could also encourage them to recreate their neighborhood in a particular year. So I'm just using Ballymun as an example again is that you could ask them to recreate Ballymun in the year 2000, assuming that they have access to somebody within their family who would be able to tell them what it was like and how it looked and you could build it using them. So, I mean, you could set a Minecraft project reasonably straightforward. And what would be um, useful in this is that you could say, okay, the time that you're going to work at, like the problem with Minecraft is that some kids, once they get into it, you know, uh, uh, stick with it for four or five hours. But you could say, okay, you're only allowed to work on this and you can only work on it when three of you or when at least two of you are working together. So it's a collaborative project and you're doing it between five o'clock and seven o'clock on a Thursday. And obviously parents would need to be would need to be sort of comfortable with that you know so you can set sort of projects like that um and i i, I would say then you know the micro bits that we looked at you could also um i mean you can code the micro bits without having a micro bit um and if you go to the micro bit site so if people are familiar if they've used micro bits and have a sense of what they are then they could um, you could set them a project to develop it as a programmable device that would sort of, I suppose, support people in reducing the spread of virus. So it could be, you know, something as simple as saying green. I mean, I, you, I, I, I don't know what you would do this, but uh, green, orange and red to say whether you have the virus, whether you're being tested for it or whether you haven't it or know that you haven't it or something, something like that, you know, that... Um, so, I mean, even using those three scratch Minecraft and micro bits, just to set very specific projects for young people to do coding and to do them in so far. I mean, Microsoft or Minecraft, sorry, is, is obviously something that they can do in a group. Um, and I think that might be really useful, but the other two, and, and I suppose the key thing to be conscious of, is to set the brief as tight as you possibly can. The reason you set the brief tight is because they will never get off the starting block if it's too general. They're just, their imagination's been rolling wild, which is a really good thing. But uh, some people just find it very hard to get started if the brief is too broad. Um, so, I mean, that's one thing that you could do with set projects in those three. Um, the other thing then is game tournaments. I mean, it sounds very straightforward. It sounds, sorry, it sounds very, um, very, um, yeah, sounds very straightforward. But I mean, um, you could set a Minecraft tournament to build a town in Minecraft. Um, and you could get a lot of people interacting on the same server to do that. So, I mean, it would be not inconceivable that a youth club in Cashel or in Ballyhonas or in um, Castle Bar could recreate the town centre or the whole town if it's a reasonably manageable town in Minecraft. It's, it's something that wouldn't be inconceivable um, or at least a town centre and then that maybe 15, 20 young people could interact in that town. Um, could do particular tasks, could meet in particular spaces in the town, you know, so um, that would have a tournament feel about it, but would be reasonably straightforward. Um, that's one thing. The other thing is um, if you take Fortnite, and this is more 
yeah, if you take Fortnite, you know, there's a facility in Fortnite that four people would play together um, and they'd play a game together. And um, rather than it just be purposeless, um, that you could ask people to play Fortnite and cap. So one of the there's a facility in Fortnite where you can uh, record gameplay, um, and that you could ask them to record gameplay that highlights cooperation. You know, so positive gameplay that that highlights epic construction skills so there's an element of Fortnite where they have to build stuff so you could ask them to record in their group a, a, a tower that they've built that you could ask them to record how they've developed new skills creative creativity how they might how they might record an act courage positivity dancing are dangerous dancing, so are racing, you know, so you could set them things that you feel are positive and get them to record themselves in teams from the youth club um, doing these things. Um, and some, like PlayStation will allow you to create little videos. It can be more difficult and you need a little bit more know-how to share those videos but you know some young people all they do is put their phone what they'll do is they'll put their phone up to the up to the television and record it on the phone and it does the same job they can post it then um when i say cross play the thing about cross the what cross play in fortnite is where people on different um devices can play together so um uh, earlier in the development of fortnite um if you had a, an Xbox, you couldn't play with somebody with a PlayStation, whereas now you can. Um, so crossplay is where people can interact. And the other sort of idea around a tournament that some young people suggested to me when I was talking with them about a tournament was a FIFA tournament. And these are lads now, mostly the, would be, now it's not all, but certainly the majority of FIFA players would be, would be male. Um, and to organize a pro club tournament. So what that is, is that FIFA normally, the way people play it is that they take charge of a team and they play as the team. But there's a way of playing FIFA whereby four or five or 10 or 11 players can actually play on the one team. Um, and it's called pro club. And it's a way of um, collaborating in FIFA um, and young people working together. So they could actually create their own club um, and it could be your youth club club. The problem with pro club tournaments is that uh, if they want to progress, they need to play a lot. You know, so if they want to get up the leagues in FIFA, then you know, they, they need to play 20 or 30 tournaments or games to be able to do that. So it's sort of a little bit more than you'd want them to be playing. But what you can do is, young people will know about this. It's a sort of trick they do is that they can ready up together. So what that means is that if you have a club in Cashel and another in Thurless, and they both have teams in FIFA Pro Club, they can communicate with each other and say, okay, we're pressing the button now and they'll press the button now. And the chances are the two of them will meet to play each other because they both looked for a, a game at the same time. And it might take three or four times for them to get it, but kids who play FIFA will know how to do it. So it'll mean you could have two clubs playing each other, <clears throat> which can be sort of, which can be fun. The other way is just to organize a league online. Um, so have players playing individually, but playing each other in a league um, and keep the scores on your website. So who's winning and whatever. And I would say you could do the exact same with something like Mario, <clears throat> which is much more gender inclusive than FIFA. Um, so you could have a Mario tournament um, or you could have another tournament and you just, what you do is when they win, uh, they're, if they're playing each other, if they win, when they win, 
uh, they just screenshot the the fact that they won, send it on to you, and you put them on the leaderboard. You know, so you could sort of keep a dynamic going within the club or using sort of tournaments like that. And there's loads of other games you could turn into tournaments. But the key thing would be getting members of the club playing each other or playing with each other. Um, and the third thing that I was thinking of was that um, you, you could set up a project where you review games and that you review them in terms of how, um, how, um, how they might be useful, how, uh, sorry, you review them in terms of how good they are as a game, but also what the values underpinning the game are. So how fun they are, how empathetic they are, how they deal with issues like discrimination, how challenging they are, how convincing they are, how, how positive the social message might be in the game. And I've sort of started trying to compile a list of games that are free that um, would have sort of positive social messaging about uh, LGBT rights, about um, disabilities, about environmental issues. Um, I suppose the challenge that I'm finding in doing that is a lot of the one, like there's a lot of amazing games dealing with those issues, but the better games are, 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 um, are not free. So the free games tend not to be quite as good uh, as the better as the more expensive games or the pay for games. But I'm sort of looking at a way around that, whether I could maybe see if I can get you sort of free access in to some of those paid for games. But um, so it'd be to try and get them playing these social impact games um, and rating them and seeing can they find ones that they feel are good and ones that are bad as well. Um, so that's really, I mean, um, and then I was just sort of saying that, you know, if you are going to use games, and I suppose this is true as well, more broadly in terms of if you're using social, if you're using digital media to com communicate with young people, I suppose you do need to get a sense of, you know, what experience they have using technology. How comfortable are young people? Like there's an assumption that all young people are technically literate, which isn't necessarily true for whatever reason they may not be. Um, either access to technology might not be as straightforward to them or, or, or some young people might just not engage with technology in the same way as we assume that most young people do or in the way that most, most young people do. Um, the other thing is parents obviously are sort of gatekeepers in terms of access to technology and you know you would need to be conscious of where parents stand with using games or other technologies. Um, you need to look at what devices young people are. You need to maybe learn what devices young people have access to, whether it's mobile phones, whether it's PlayStations, Xboxes, whether it's PC, laptop, Apple, you know, whatever devices, because, you know, your, their ability to interact will be dependent on what device they have and those that don't have direct access to any of those, um, which may be the case. Um, the other thing is how interested young people are in doing this and what sort of times might work for them um, so that if you are trying to do collective activities that you link in with the times that they're interested in. And obviously, as we were saying earlier, if you can keep those times to the times that you previously would have done youth work, that would be good. I suppose the other aspect in using games in particular is that there is a real gender dimension to games. Girls and boys don't not, um, it would be a good opportunity to look at breaking some of this stuff down, but they tend to play different games and they tend not to play together if they are playing the same game. Um, so it's to look at what you might need to do in relation to that. Um, the other thing to be conscious of is the extent to which staff are happy or comfortable engaging with games. Um, and this might be a great opportunity to get staff more engaged so if you're running a fifa tournament you know there will need to be a number of staff who are sort of um engaged with fifa or if you're running a minecraft or if you're running scratch or running whatever but it might be a good opportunity for people to to engage with and the, the last thing there i mean there, 
probably as other things you can think of, is what resources are available to you as a youth service to engage with this stuff. So um, will you be able to buy subscriptions to Minecraft, for example, or will you be able to make prizes available? Will you be able to access your website and make changes or input onto your websites? And will you be able to do that in a way that creates or supports them in meeting in, in moving this project along as quickly as possible. Um, so that's really, I suppose, some of the suggestions. Um, the other thing, just is just as a an, an aside in some ways, is that um, I sort of asked a group of young people the other day. I was just on a a Zoom meeting with them and I was sort of thinking about this coming up and I just asked them how might youth workers get more involved uh, in um, in um, how might they learn to play and what the suggestion was that young people would teach youth workers how to play things like Fortnite or Minecraft or FIFA and they'd do it in the context of a team that you'd link up with three or four young, young people and then you're in their team and they need to teach you so their team can do can do better. Um, and that's say, I mean, obviously online courses. And the other thing, I mean, I would encourage you if any of you are in a position to is um, one of the really interesting things, um, and we were going to do it on the on the at the next session that we had together was looking at virtual and augmented reality. Um, and in some ways, the irony is this. I feel is that virtual reality, um, while it's technically very complex, um, is really intuitive in some in, in some ways. And augmented reality, you know, so the virtual reality headsets make technology much more accessible in a, in a lot of ways. Um, and if you were in a position, if your youth organisations had had headsets or whatever, it might be a good opportunity to become familiar with virtual reality environments and augmented reality environments but I'll come back to that again. Okay, so it's just really to open that up and is there any of that stuff that you feel would be worthwhile us pursuing or me pursuing or um, is there anything there that sort of particularly interested you in terms of learning more about or trying to do one of these sort of projects over the next month or two months or however long it may be yeah yeah i think we'll definitely try to scratch and see how it goes okay okay and um that's great erin have you used scratch before with groups um no we have a few people on our team that are a bit techie so i'll just send them on the link and hopefully they'll be able to figure it out themselves because i am absolutely useless okay um, and our young people are quite good at tech stuff, so but once we give it to them, they're quite um, well able to throw things together themselves. So trial and error, see how it goes. Okay. We're just trying to try everything at the moment, to keep in contact with them. Yeah. So anything that works. Yeah, I mean, I think in some ways as well, even, you know, say, um, if, if it, I mean, a competitive element, it's not always the dynamic you want to encourage, but if, if you can sort of maybe have a competition and maybe some prize at the yeah. end it, it can really it can it can break down the challenges they might face in getting engaged at the beginning mm. yeah what do you think Ashling? me what do you think um yeah um it's look like we were yeah at our place we're kind of planning to do stuff sort of like this um anyway but we weren't sure how to kind of structure it so i took a screenshot here of the coding games scratch um kind of slide yeah just so i could show them you know like yeah we could break it up into say five phases or what have you um like our young people are familiar enough with things like scratch and micro bit and that kind of thing so yeah um, I mean i think the key thing and i i had started on doing some briefs for projects but I think the key thing is that the brief is really, really clear um, and that you have, a, that they have a sense that they know what you're asking them to do. And then they. Yeah. 
yeah because um that is the thing like even when you're there with them it can be very hard at times just to you know because it's hard to get settled and focused in on what you're trying to do so like at the moment I've been trying to write like tutorials for various things for yeah. young you know so that I could give to young people and yeah even just trying to even think of it you know that that you're supposed to try and think of it in a way that it's like imagine that you're speaking to someone who's never seen any of this stuff before so it does you know like it, you do need to be very kind of specific and clear and not make assumptions about how much the other person knows absolutely and that kind of thing so and it is yeah you kind of start thinking even about things you'd be very familiar with in different ways like the fact that say for example i know in photoshop you'd be like i would know that the weird little box there on the toolbar oh that's the eraser but i mean how do you what if someone had never seen that before how do they know that's the eraser that kind of thing yeah so yeah to just try and think about it in a new way and it's like it's an important kind of exercise in itself to try and view it from somebody else's perspective and that kind of thing you know one of the things Ashling, this is just as a sort of a tip in some ways is that sometimes the best way to do a sort of tutorial video you know is if you did it out on on whatever format you like powerpoint or whatever but um zoom into some young person that you know who sort of represents the type of young people that you want to understand this and yeah. you know record yourself going through your presentation to that mm. person yeah that's um, really you know and because when you're recording a, a presentation to a powerpoint or you're just doing it to yourself you're really talking only to yourself but if you even have on the other side of a line another real person mm. you tend to talk differently yeah um, well that's even for some of the tutorials like these are kind of written ones like and some of the things I'm there, like I've taken a million different screen captures of whatever in Tinkercad. And some things it's like, man, I should just make like a video because then you can show them it's this thing here. Abs and absolutely. You, yeah. And there's loads of, you know, there's Panopta, there's loads of different ways to make, but Zoom is as good as any of them if you, mm. if you record because you can, you can share the screen and you can go from one application to another and it forces you to be, it's not slick, but it's... Yeah job you know mm. does it i know that one of my uh co-workers she wouldn't you know kind of technology stuff kind of quite challenging so i was thinking of even asking her um uh, to te kind of play test my tutorials before i spread them out because if, then if she's able to follow it even though she finds like stuff on the computer very um kind of intimidating then yeah. You know, young people who are a bit more familiar with it might, you know, they shouldn't have a problem necessarily. So. What What do you think, Ashley? I mean, I know the micro bit. You found that reasonably straightforward the last day, the little coding thing that you did with um, Natasha. Yeah, I did. Um, still, would feel very daunting daunting to start it on my own. I have to say, but. Yeah. Um, I'd say yeah, it's worth giving it a go, you know. But you know what would be really yeah. interesting, even. Um, uh, sorry, I, I'm just going to mute myself. My dog is barking at me. Sorry, hold on. Okay. Um, but I'd say Ashley, um, one of the things you know, um, even to play with scratch yourself, because um, what I've found, um, even from an artistic perspective, um what you can do is, you know, draw your own characters or create your own characters, whether they're, you know, they call them sprites and sprites are little things that move around the screen. Um, but very quickly, you can create a little animation that is an awful lot more, it looks an awful lot better than the amount of effort you have to put into doing it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so it's a, if, if you did find yourself with a bit of time and uh, energy, um, 
um, Scratch is a sort of an interesting sort of, and Scratch for artists even is an interesting um, skill to develop and you can develop it reasonably quickly. It's, you know, what you did with the micro bit is the start of it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, I'll definitely give that a go. And I'm even thinking just listening there to a few other people, the idea of maybe online tutorials or engagements in that way. I had a, the idea of starting a podcast or something to do with music, but now I'm going to start to think about how my games be put in. So I have been thinking of how do I get my voice across. Yeah. I might play with technology as well in that sense. Yeah. 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 I, I think, I think, I think you're right. I think, I think podcasts are really, really very, very good. Um, um, but it's brilliant to be able to add a visual element as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and even, I mean, I think one of the things to play around with is something like, um, is something like, um, zoom. There's another program called screencast o -Matic. Okay. Screencast o Yeah, screencast o If you just Google it, and it's a really clever way of making videos. Um, so you can speak to the video, and it allows you to do a lot of editing, and it's very, it's very intuitive. I mean, it you you have to pay once you go beyond five minute videos, I think. But even to play with it on the five minute videos will show you whether it's something you want to use or not. Okay. Um, but as an alternative to podcasts, it's very, very good. Which sounds a bit more the way I work because I do take little videos uh, and, I ne and I never listen to podcasts, if I'm honest. Yeah, no. <laughs> and yeah, I think podcasts is... I mean, for me anyway, um, I think the only way a podcast would work for me is if I was taping a conversation with somebody. Mm. Um, I would not be able to do a podcast just to microphone. A conversation taped as a podcast would work much better. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think the idea of putting something like games or something like... Um, um, video video content or graphic content into it really would work as well. Yeah. What do you think, Megan? Is there any any anything there that you think might be useful to develop? Oh, definitely. Like that as well. I suppose I'd be very conscious that a lot of staff wouldn't be very tech savvy, yeah. um, and a lot of our young people don't have access to laptops yeah. so what i'm trying to look at and what i've kind of done a list of is even free apps they can use on their phones and things like that yeah um because i'm just conscious that a lot of like we were talking to and one family have one phone between the whole family um so there's a bit of challenges around equipment um but i like the idea of the tournaments like for people that do have playstations or, or other devices like that so i think that's something that we might explore a bit more um, and as you said, getting maybe the young people to teach the play different games or or yeah. play in a tournament with the young people because I think that was one of the things that the a group of Mayo were saying with their individuals that they might it might be easier for them to go and play a game of FIFA and chat online rather yeah. than making mm -hmm. a phone call because a lot of young people won't spend a lot of time on phone calls. I think people are getting there like five ten minutes of a check in, and as well, a lot of people are concerned that. The family might be engaged with lots of services, so the family might be getting a lot of phone calls. Um, absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. I, I, I absolutely, I, I totally, I mean, young people have gotten out, they will not make phone calls unless it's an emergency. Oh. Um, so for a lot of them, the social interaction that games provide is, is, is very useful. What I would say in relation to tournaments, and so far as you possibly can, you know, design in a youth work type element. So it's it's that it's um, you know that there that it's not just the game that they would have played anyway between their friends, but that there's some sort of youth work um, narrative or some sort of youth work objective underpinning it. Mm. Um, and it might 
you know be that you want you know insofar you know i suppose that's the that's the the challenge in some ways is to is that once they start playing this game they know it's sort of part of the youth work space they're in rather than just playing games with their friends as they might do on other nights of the week um so as you say is try and get them to hitch together within sort of their youth groups or um create some sort of story underneath it but i think one of the other points that you raised megan that is bigger than this is you know whether there's ways of getting young people access to technology where their families mightn't have it yeah and we're looking at that as an organization i suppose as i mentioned i can't remember now this is my third my third video call in a row today so my mind is a bit frazzled but yeah. we were Camaro ireland work with us so uh, we have a number of laptops in the projects so we're hopefully giving them to different families but again we're only limited in what we can we can give out yeah. Um, yeah. and then the access to internet is a big thing because some of our projects might be in Connemara and different places like that would, wouldn't have great great connection um, sure. there's limitations there but I'd be very interested to hear and as you said that you researched a few of these games yeah. any optional games or even online group activities or, or things like that I suppose we are looking at using Zoom uh, just because Again, with dash protection, different things like that, it, it just meets our standards. And, and as the ladies were saying earlier, we're looking at our guidelines and waiting for them to come out. Um, because another few items that we would love to be able to use, we can't because of dash protection. Um, yeah. So yeah. I'm open to any gaming ideas, it would be fantastic. Yeah. That's, the, that's what I'm wondering about with um, Discord. Like, we set up a Discord, but I'm, I'm still not sure about how that's going to work, kind of. Yeah, youth safety wise and stuff. Yeah, I mean, there is a Discord is pro potentially challenging if you mm. require them to set up an account. Yeah. Um, the one thing about Zoom is uh, you can come into a meeting in Zoom without any of your data being harvested. Mm. Yeah, like. Whereas uh, Discord wants to lock people into you know membership and, and the rest of it so yeah, yeah. And, um but it's a matter of looking into it i mean i could maybe do a little bit on that um is there, is there anything else anybody maybe feels that they might use or might be useful any ideas there that they'd like more information on the uh 2f or t2fm is doing uh, can, uh, what is it create don't contaminate so like a different activity each day that they're sharing on twitter i think it is but i've been looking it up and sending it across to my young people like via whatsapp and stuff so today it was they had to find objects around the home that they could juggle with like circus skills and take okay. a wee video of it and send it in so it's something different every day between music art or dance so yeah. different things do you think, I mean, this is one of the really interesting things in terms of something like 2FM, they can scale something up beyond a club or a small, you know, um, I wonder my NYCI, is there a space for a national organization, whether it's Broig or NYCI, to um, try to scale some of this stuff up and say, we're going to run a national event for youth clubs or for young people through their youth clubs or something like that. Would that, would that yeah 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 potentially yeah. we were talking we had a meeting at, at nyci earlier about digital youth work and um i think they were talking about potentially having some sort of a webinar where youth workers could share good practice is that what you just mentioned there um paul or you said what, what did you just say uh, there? I think, yeah no that's one thing but i think the other thing possibly is for young people themselves oh yes yeah, sorry yeah you know yeah. um that rather than it just being a sort of a, because I think the reality might be that if you took any one youth club, it might only be a small number of young people, you know, maybe six, 10, I don't know what numbers might be like, but there might be a relatively small number of people who might be engaged in this stuff. So having a sort of a competition within one youth club may may only last for a short amount of time whereas if you looked at it being 
a national competition or a national initiative or something with a bit more traction, it becomes more appealing for young people. Yeah. yeah. I was chatting to Barry Lennon there in Youth Work Ireland that is over the Amos. So he mentioned that the Irish Youth Music Awards are going to be doing like sessions of it because the heats are all sort of called off now. They're, they're looking at ways that that can be done digitally. Yeah. yeah. yeah so for, for like musical lessons and performances and things. Yeah. No, I think that's, and I mean, I think even things like, you know, the Trocara Games thing is probably going to be problematic now, but I mean, there's no reason why if they change things slightly, they couldn't make it more about scratch. And it might mm-hmm. be something that uh, young people might engage with now because, you know, you could do it in a constructive way remotely rather than maybe the board games that they would have had to do in teams. Um Okay, is there is there anything else is there anything else you need support on or is there anything else that would be useful for around the whole area of games and you work or, or even in terms of the project more broadly, you know, is there any advice you give to ourselves or to Barbara as to how we might change this project to be more useful to you or given the current circumstances? No, I think Zoom works really well, like, yeah. in terms of, yeah. Okay. But even all those resources and suggestions, I think we're all kind of scrambling to come up with ideas at the moment on a regional, local and national level. So I think any resources or ideas to share, and as we we're all saying, and even with National Youth Council Ireland, just for us all to share different ideas, because we all want to engage with young people. There's going to be loads of young people out of sorts for the next while. So any more resources or ideas or games, yeah. Share them. Well, Please. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe would it would it be reasonable if I if I did this, if I took those three ideas, so the scratch competition, the Minecraft competition, and the micro bit, and then the tournaments. Um and the other thing was the yeah, the tournaments and work it into a maybe three or four page document that I can send to you as guidelines as draft guidelines as to how you might use it and you yeah yeah Yeah, i think that would be really so i I could look at trying getting that out to you in the next couple of days and if there was any possibility of any suggestions of games or anything without needing to use a computer sorry now i'm just putting a spanner in the works there (laughs) just virtual games without a computer yeah, well, it's just, I suppose, a lot would maybe have phones and things. Oh, is it phones? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. They would have good, yeah. Yeah, they wouldn't actually have access to laptops because I'm just conscious that yeah. Scratch would need a laptop. So a lot of our young people wouldn't have access to We're going to try our best, but I just know that not every young person. So it's just to make sure that we have enough options. And I don't know if that's for you, Paul, or for us to keep researching, but it's just any no, I think it's a really, I think it's a really useful thing to, you know, um, yeah. I think it's a you really can use you can use Zoom on your phones in the way that you yes. can on a laptop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were we're using the Zoom with the phones or yeah. tablets and things like that. It just would not for just scratch. for games. Yeah, not for scratch or, or the likes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. No, I think I think that's really. Um, I think maybe the thing that would be I I would really like to do as well within this group, and I don't know how to do it. Is you know. Um, I don't know how to do it at the moment is say some forum for sharing. Yeah. Um, the website isn't ideal. It was sort of put together sort of quite quickly. Um, but um, what I might do is I might ask Kat- Catherine maybe that if you do come across stuff that you feel is useful, if Catherine could forward it to me and then I could put it up on the website oh. we could sort of. Or we could even, um, I wonder, could we even like share a file somehow with each other to put stuff into, if that would be useful? Yeah, I mean, are, like, do people use Google Google Docs or do they? Or Microsoft? Do you? What do you use, Paul? Do you use? Um, I use both now, and we have yeah. and we have. Um, I mean, Google Google Docs is reasonably straightforward as long as people have Google accounts or Gmail accounts. Yeah. I think you can actually open it now without a Gmail account. Yeah. There's actually this really cool group on Facebook, just if anyone is on Facebook, it's called Isolation Youth Work. 
and it just just loads of different youth workers popping different um resources and all into it if anyone wants to join it it's pretty cool self-isolation youth workers yeah, yeah. oh no just uh self-isolation youth work youth oh right work. and then you uh, yeah, you have to fill in like this little questionnaire to get into it. Like, say that you're a youth worker and they see all good posts, hit that advertise. There's some really good things, though. Great. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. That's great. Thanks. I'm sort of conscious that you've, everybody's been here for the last hour and a half. And as, <laughs> as you mentioned, Tracy, after a while with Zoom meetings, I think brains become a little. Time's out. Oh. oh, did are you on a different program to allow you on it longer? Because it cut me off there earlier yeah. after forty minutes. Yeah, I have a paid for. This is why I come up with Seamus Hine, because one of my colleagues has a paid for account. So oh, I, I, use, I use his account, Tracy. So um, it allows me to stay on for as long as I want which seems like a good thing, but I think maybe um, if it was cut off at 40 minutes, it might be good as well. Um, but if you pay for the account, you get a bit longer. The other thing, oh, okay. the other thing just to say to you, if you're using it for young people, and especially, I mean, if you keep it to, if you can keep it to, I mean, this is a big group, but if you can keep it to five or six, under eight, what I found is really helpful is that, if you're using the video screen and if people can so we don't have i mean you're not locked into you, you don't have a sort of the videos up but if you were using the video screen um one of the things that can happen is that those who speak the most their faces come up front and center so what what zoom does is it has it, it, it has a microphone and if you're talking it puts your picture in the middle so tracy's in the middle at the moment because your microphone is showing up sound. Um, the convener of the meeting is never in the middle. So I'm never in the middle that I can see, but Tracy, so what is a good thing to do is, uh, um, beside people's name, when people are in the meeting, beside their name, there's a little blue, um, you can highlight a little blue dialogue box. And the little blue dialogue box can sh allow you to show any of the participants. So it's not just those that are talking, you can show up anybody's face. So it means if you have young people, you can ask somebody a question and put them, you know, put them in the center. Um, and it sort of allows you to control who's featured in the talk. And especially for quieter young people, maybe who wouldn't be saying a lot, it's good because it it allows them to um, to I suppose take the stage if that's the if they want to. Um, but it it it's just a, a handy thing to be aware of if you're using videos. Um, okay, will we leave it at that, folks? It was really useful. Thank you. Yeah, that was really good. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, and guys. And thank we, you. I, I think another thing just to keep posted as well is, I mean, I know um, Ashley is not linked into a youth group, but if people want to make contact with each other around this, you know, um, insofar as you have each other's contact details, um, it mm. might be a good thing as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thank okay. Bye. Bye, everybody. Stay safe.